Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show. Remember Adam Miller coming up here in 30 minutes, who is a, uh, a natural scorer from, uh, from the University of Illinois. He is transferring to LSU basketball uh, and has a huge wave of momentum behind the Tigers on the transfer and in the transfer portal as we will talk to Adam Miller. Hunt Palmer was here, uh, but we have been looking back, uh, looking forward. To our uh, to our next conversation, as uh, Big Bad Brad Johnson Big here Bad is Brad. back by popular demand. My 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 guy <laughs> is <laughs> killing Doink. social media right now. We had to get in touch with him. They saw the father son challenge, where uh, Max and the Bull, Big Bad Brad, from uh, thirty five yards out on the Doink. How far out, Coach? <laughs> well. <laughs> One was Max and I. We're at the twenty yard line. So it, oh, that, that's, not, that's a layup for you, yeah, coach. Yeah, that's that's a thirty yard throw complete. I did one from the forty, which is about a fifty five yard throw, counting the end zone, on the height of the bar at uh, in the bat LSU practice facility. So that one took a little bit of work, and uh, <laughs> so I've had fun with these, you know, making TikTok videos and. Uh, basketball trick shots and doink shots and <laughs> golf and things and kind of it finds humor out of it. I mean, I, I, I did I did a couple yesterday and I left. I came home last night. I was cramping. <laughs> <laughs> Still got I was it. Exhausted, Still man. <laughs> I was exhausted, but it, it's been fun. And and actually, it's I was out on the field. I was throwing at the crossbar the other day with Max, and then there were some students sitting in the stands and, and before we threw, they go, holy cow, here they go. They can make a doink video. So uh, it's kind of getting around a little bit. No, it, is. It. it is, man. You're doing a, uh, it, it's, it's the accessibility. I mean, people can relate to that. It's, it, you, you have people laughing. You have people kind of wanting more. You, you yeah. have a, you have a pin tweet that, that I quote tweeted that has a three point <laughs> shot that you bounced off the floor. Then you drain yep. a three pointer then you spin the yep. finger, uh, you you spin the ball on your finger and make a layup off of it. And then you make a full court shot with a football. Um, yep. I, it's incredible to watch when you're just watching the video of it. How long did it take you to to, to get that? You know what? Um, some videos I've done in five minutes. Some videos. There's one video that I did. That video you're talking about. That probably took about two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, because you got to make every shot, and then you feel the pressure of it, and then. Right. I did a, there's one with an ocean spray, I'm drinking the ocean spray. And uh, that one, it took a long time. The ball bounces over the back of the backboard. And um, and, and honestly, you start feeling the pressure. You got to make that football long shot at the very end. I start, I start licking my fingers and here we, you know, you like you're back underneath center again. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but yeah. It, it is pure enjoyment when you make it. And uh, all my life, I mean, I did, all I did was drills and drills and drills. And so I never took any half-court shots or any spin shots. And now I'm 52 years old and retired. I can do whatever I want to do. So I'm making trick shot videos for TikTok. So it's, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Um, and, and I have fun. And I'll say, you know, I always say Big Bad Brad, back by popular man, on yeah. my TikTok fans. So it's, it's just something fun. It's humor. And that's. That's what it's made for. We love it, man. We we, we love it. Uh, you, you seem very natural. Obviously, you played quarterback at your Super Bowl winning quarterback. You played at Florida State. Uh, but I mean, the jumper looks smooth. The golf swing looks smooth. Who who is the best athlete? This may be an unfair question because you played with so many of them along the way, and you played on great teams. Um, but but who, as a professional athlete, did you say, "Damn, that cat's a he's a great athlete." Yeah, there's two guys that I would say that could do everything from parlor sports like bowling and uh, ping pong to throwing darts and air hockey and, and those kind of things. And obviously shooting basketball and golf and football. The, the two guys that really, really come to my mind is um, John Smoltz, Hall of Fame baseball player. He's a scratch golfer, uh, had a basketball for, I think, the Michigan State and throw a football Um he, he can play an accordion. He's got a Pac-Man record and Gallagher record. You've never <laughs> can't even imagine breaking. You know what I mean? He can multitask like no other. Wow. And a great ping pong player. And then the other one's actually Tony Romo. Tony's very good at all sports. He can play soccer, tennis. He was a basketball player. Can play in college. Obviously, he's you know Ring of Honor in Dallas and you know tremendous quarterback. Now he's an announcer. But those two guys can do it all. It's like wow. a all sports and. uh yeah, you, know, you can see you can see Tony. He's won, I think, the Celebrity Golf Tour. Uh, that that thing at Tahoe a couple of times and stuff. So, you know, guys. But honestly, that's you know, I think the more you can do kind of thing, it, it, you know, multitask like that, you can 
you're probably pretty good with your hands and eye coordination and just uh, skills and kind of thing. And, and what I think the greatness of it is you really become kind of creative with your mind. Sure. And uh, whether it's you know drawing up plays on the dirt and, and, and the dirt, playing backyard football or basketball, those kind of things. So that's what's kind of neat about it. We were talking to Jimmy Burrow, Joe's dad, a couple of weeks back going into the NFL draft, and he was talking about how he urged Joe and his sons growing up to play multiple sports. Did you see the advantage yep. of that for – for Max and for Jake now uh, as he comes no up? doubt yeah no doubt uh, I think you know I, th- I think what kind of gets lost for kids is um, two things one I don't think they play enough uh, uh, they pick teams in the backyard you know play shirts right. and skins and go play basketball and and just play you know play imaginary games of frisbee golf and you know kick the can and you know uh, I mean just games and then watch the games really on TV and hear the announcers, how they explain the game and uh, those kind of things. So a kid that can play basketball, usually, you know, what you, you know what's, what's your man offense? What's your, zone, what's your zone offense? What is your out-of-bounds play with five seconds? Uh, you know, out-of-bounds play with you're down four with, you know, 15 seconds. Those kind of things. Just strategy, uh, being able to draw plays up on a grease board or, or, you know, in the dirt, those kind of things, being able to communicate. And so I, I do believe – uh, multitask and playing both sports is key. Uh, and um, it carries over just in your eye hand coordination and then your leadership skills in both. And then sometimes you're not as good in one sport as the other. So sometimes you may be a leader, sometimes you may be a follower yeah. and uh, those kind of things. And just learning, learning both roles of, you know, being able to be both. Uh, Jake is tabbed as the top tight end in the country, one of the top pass catching tight ends in, in the recruiting cycle. He, he shut down the recruiting process and pledge to LSU this LSU recruiting class that is surrounding him uh, has five stars just dripping out of it whether it's Walker Howard the quarterback Will Campbell the offensive tackle there's a couple of skilled players in that class and then you add Jake to it Uh, can you tell us about his recruitment and then ultimately choosing LSU from your point of view yeah Jake Jake went he he got to go through the process a little bit with Max watching him go through it and going all the the summer camps and those kind of things and meeting a lot of the head coaches when he was in eighth and ninth grade. And then obviously he went through that own process and he, I mean, (laughs) he, you know, he dealt with head coaches and coordinators on his own uh, phone conversations and and he's able to make a decision on his own. So it was, it was tough um, because you want to do what's right for you. And at the end of the day, he just felt very, very comfortable. Uh, You know, he's been on campus a bunch at LSU, been to camps, been around Coach O, uh, obviously making a relationship with the tight ends coach with Derek Shea and Tyler Orgeron. And then ultimately, you know, uh, Jake Pete's coming in had a big factor on him too. So, but I think, you know, if you're going to win, you want to be in a great system for all kids. Uh, you want to be in a great system and be around great players. And then, you know, kids that love ball and love work ethic and, and want to be a part of something special. So I know those guys, they get on video games and, you know, he's made a great relationship, I think, already with Walker and, uh, Jack Bash and, and some guys like that. They're on their own chat lines playing Fortnite or the Madden football games. and So it's been fun for them just to kind of develop, and then eventually they'll be together pretty soon. What type of player is he, Coach, for, for us down here in Louisiana? They'll see him every Friday night and just see the highlights of him. I mean, he looks big, yeah. fast, and strong, but w- when you watch him play from your point of view, what's his what's his advantage? Yeah, J- Jake, uh, he's six five and a half, six six. He's long, like long arms. Um, he loves to compete. He loves to learn. He loves to be taught. He loves to, you know, what's the process of why you're putting in a play. And uh, he wants to be coached. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the his number one trait. He wants to be coached. He wants to learn. Obviously, he has, you know, a certain skill set that's, that's pretty unique. And um, he has a, uh, an ability to run routes and catch balls and, and just um, and the will to get better. So he's excited. It'll be a great fit for him being at, uh, at LSU. And uh, obviously, you know, he's, he is, you know, we, we live 596 miles away. <laughs> we drive that <laughs> ride a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, I got a tag in the back of my car. It tells you, okay. if anybody sees it, it says Tiger Stadium, 596 miles. So, nice. But, you know, nice. it's, it's um, you know, Coach O, he says, that's, you know, he shows you where, he says, that's where you sleep and that's where you eat, this is where you train and this is where you develop and that's where you shine. I'm right. talking about this Tiger Stadium. So, but it's, it's neat for both our kids to be together and uh, just be a part of a special place. How much did Max Johnson have to do with the recruitment at all? Was he in his brother's ear at all, or did you want him to have his own kind of, like, own journey to recruiting? It, that's a unique thing. It's a great question. I mean, it's, 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 you know, Max had to make a decision for himself. 
And it, that's a long, long story, and I'm sure one day we'll talk about it. But that, yeah. that was a long – it was a hard decision, but he felt like it was the right decision. And he even feels more confirmed about it now. And Jake, he, Max had to let, let Jake make his own decision. He Obviously, he said, listen, you know, he told him the benefits of it. And, and you know, and Jake's been on campus a bunch just visiting. And, uh, but just, he had, you know, he, 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 he had to make, he had developed in some great relationships with some other schools and head coaches and, and some people. And, but at the end of the day, he has to make that decision, what he wants to live with. And, and obviously Max had a big part of it, but it's also a place where he felt like he could, uh, you know, grow as a person and have a great career and, and just look forward to working and learning and getting better at LSU. Seemed like Max had a good month uh, of spring drills. What, what, what did you make of, uh, of his workouts, his 15 practices, and, and and his first spring with DJ Mangus as the passing game coordinator and Jake Peets as the offensive coordinator? I just felt like the team, they all got better. I mean, they, they had some injuries and along the way, but they found, you know, different ways. To, I went down for the scrimmages and I was to the spring game. I just felt like the, the team was really, really coming together. And um, so it's fun to, you know, you know, they got a new coordinator with Jake Peets and DJ Mangus, and 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 but you have a lot of former coaches that have been there too. So I think they're just growing. Uh, they got. I think the unique, the great thing about that team was they had a lot of kids come back that could have graduated and went on. They but they wanted to come back. I think the way they finished last season was a big part of of recruiting your own players, and uh, so I think that was the key with the, especially the line play. And so it'll be fun to watch them grow. I feel like Max is excited and getting better, but. But I feel like all those quarterbacks, they got better throughout the whole spring. And, and I think you just got a guy, a lot of guys are very hungry to play and, and want to compete and, um, and have a great year this year. What's the off season? Um, what, what are you looking forward to off season in, in him improving uh, between year one and year two uh, from your point of view? I know that you guys work out a lot in the off season together. Is there an emphasis this off season? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, for, for a quarterback, there's the, the three P's. One is, uh, you know, knowing your protections and then going to be able to go through your, your uh, protections are key and then be able to go through your progressions, making reads real, real fast and getting through it and being decisive. And then obviously developing your relationship with a play caller. Mm-hmm. And uh, those those things are very, very key. And they're just feeling comfortable in the system and the people around you. So I, I feel, you know, like all those quarterbacks, they grew this spring. I feel like uh, Coach Beach has made a, you know, made an emphasis as far as not just you know learning football and schemes, but just developing that trust and relationship, and just how they can grow as, you know, on the field, off the field, but then have a, you know, have a full understanding of what that system provides and where it can grow. And uh, so I feel like, obviously, you know, from year one, <laughs> you just like, you know, where do I line up in the line? Sure. Where do I go? You know what I mean? And then, you know, what's the snap count? And then you like. Dude, you're hungry for plays, and you just want to you want to watch more film. You want to grow. You want to get better. And so, I think the biggest thing is just being decisive and accurate with the ball, and um, and understand those three things I was talking about with protections, progressions, and then going with your play caller. Coach, last time you were on here, you rattled off some play calls yourself from back in the day. Is that something that runs in the family? We can uh, depend on Max to have that that recall. You know what's interesting about college? I don't know if they call plays anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Everything comes in they, they from the sideline, right? Yeah, they're like a you know like a sitting out there with a, like a like an owl, just with heads on a swivel looking to the <laughs> sideline. So, but you know it, it's different. There's scam. I mean, that you know probably where college ball is now is probably where I was as a professional in my fifth or sixth year in the league, as far as you know audibles and box counts and. Uh, hand signals and man and zone plays and being full field reads. So it's, it's pretty cool uh, to see where they're at. And it's, I mean, it's competitive every day, you know, for those kids. And, and um, I mean, I know Max, he says, man, I mean, he, <laughs> he says like, every day is a game day. I mean, you're going against, you know, Derek Stingley and Lias Ricks. And I mean, it, it's extremely competitive. So um, that, that's, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you better, you better come with your eyes wide open every day. Brad, what do you make of Urban Meyer bringing back Tim Tebow as a tight end? Yeah, I, you know what? I, it's, it's, it's um, you know, Coach Meyer, he's had unbelievable success, right, man, you know, in college. And then, obviously, he's getting ready, you know, <laughs> he's going to have to learn the, you know, the pro game. It's, the hashes are different. The rosters are different. And you can't recruit. You got to, you got free agents. You got to draft. And, but he's a smart guy. And he'll figure it out. But, you know, Tebow, he deserves every right to, to make that team. But they'll choose the best 53. So I think it's great that Tim 
if Tebow wants to keep the dream alive, then great. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to keep what's best on the roster. I don't, I don't have a clue what's going on down there, but, you know, it's, uh, I think it's awesome. He, you know, a guy won a Heisman, national championship for him, so <laughs> Urban can do whatever he wants to, and Tebow's good enough, he'll make it. So we'll see what happens. How is the uh, last one, Coach? We'll get you out of here. How, how's the schedule work for you as a, as a coach and, uh, and and as a dad these days that is that is so influential in your son's life? How do you how do you manage coaching and, and, and what's going on at home? Yeah, it's wild. Uh, we, we're in spring football right now. We do we even the fall we practice at six a.m. every day, and then we do walkthroughs in the afternoon. And then <clears throat> somewhere during the day, I find time to either work out and watch film. And then you know I get my golf and my TikTok videos in there too. So you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's work, man. That's it right. is work, but uh, <laughs> but you know I, I think you know it's been a great break for Max to come home. Uh, and Jake and really you know you we get separated as a family and then you know for them to kind of be back together and sleep in their own beds and for Max just food in the pantry he hadn't seen that in a year and um, <laughs> clean you clothes. know and it, yeah you know, <laughs> you know it's just a little bit different but it, it's great for family time and and um, so but looking forward to the fall and and I'm, I'm really looking forward for all those kids on the team honestly to go back to classes to not just be doing online classes and just you know, where they get to, you know, grow as a as, you know, college students and, you know, life besides just being in a dorm and Zoom calls and football. So I think those are great things, and hopefully I think things will, you know, open up this, this fall for a lot of those kids. Big Bad Brad, back by popular demand right here on the Jordy Collada <laughs> Show. Our friend, thank you as always for great conversation and insight. We'll be uh, reaching out again soon. Thank you. Uh, thanks, awesome. uh, Coach. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, man. Uh, there is uh, Brad Johnson checking in this morning. As uh, he was, uh, he, he's a he's a high school football coach over there in the state of Georgia, uh, and he's a social media star. Uh, <laughs> as uh, as he's blowing up on uh, on TikTok.